Hello, welcome to another video of our MDCN series. My name is Dr. Mariam, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to assess dehydration in a patient. But before we begin, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe. Dehydration is a common presentation in clinical practice. It is of utmost importance that you equip yourself with the knowledge to be able to pick it up when it is present. So what is dehydration? Dehydration is simply loss of total body water. It can be mild, moderate, or severe, depending on the percentage body weight loss. So for mild dehydration, patients have lost up to 5% of their body weight. For moderate dehydration, they've lost between 5 and 10%, and that's usually estimated to just be 7.5%. And for severe dehydration, patients have lost up to 10% or above of their body weight. In terms of symptoms, for mild dehydration, patients are usually hemodynamically stable with moist mucous membranes. They might be thirsty a bit, but for the most part, they are okay. For moderate dehydration, patients might be irritable, they might be eager to drink, they might have dry mucous membranes and might have slight sunken eyeballs. For severe dehydration, patients might be lethargic if conscious at all, they might have severely sunken eyeballs, might have delayed capillary refill, decreased screen turgor, and if they are attached to urinary catheters, might have no urine output. Assessment for dehydration depends on the age of the patient and is done systematically from head to toe. So from the head, if the patient is less than 18 months old, we would need to check for the anterior fontanel. A depressed anterior fontanel means severe dehydration. After the anterior fontanel, you look at the eyes for any presence of tears or sunken eyeballs. And then at this point, we can give the patient something to drink to ascertain their level of thirst. If they drink calmly, that usually indicates mild dehydration. If they drink eagerly, that usually indicates moderate dehydration. Sir, can you please open your mouth and bring out your tongue? Now raise it up. We inspect the oral cavity for the level of hydration. In moderate dehydration, the patient will usually have dry mucous membranes, and in severe dehydration, they will look parched. Their tongues might even look cracked. The next is to check for the vitals of the patient. So the vitals in terms of dehydration include counting the respiratory rate, feeling for the pulse, and taking the blood pressure. A tachypneic patient who is also tachycardic and hypotensive usually indicates hemodynamic instability and which is usually seen in severe dehydration. After that, we we'll check for capillary refill. Can I please have your hands up? Thank you. So we press on the nails, watch. So a delayed capillary refill of more than three seconds usually indicates severe dehydration. The next step is to check for skin turner. Like we explained before, skin turgor is normal recoil of the skin, which can be delayed in mild to moderate dehydration. Lastly, if the patient is attached to a urinary catheter with a urine bag, we need to check for the color of the urine and the quantity. In mild dehydration, the urine is mostly not really affected. In moderate dehydration, the urine can be smaller in quantity and might look very concentrated or dark. While in severe dehydration, the patient might not be making any urine at all. This is probably a good time to ask, what is the normal urine output? Well, the normal urine output actually depends on the age. In infants, it's actually two mils per kilogram per hour. In toddlers, it's usually 1.5 mils per kilogram per hour. In older children, it's one mil per kilogram per hour, while in adults, it's 0.5 mils per kilogram per hour. Brings us to the end of our examination. If you learned something or liked anything I had to say, please leave a like and leave any questions in the comment section below. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. And I'll